Now that we have our login form then, there's a couple of steps that we need to take. We need to uh, obviously allow the user to enter their email address. We need to look them up by their email address. Obviously, if they don't exist, then we don't want to do anything. What we then want to do is request a link. And as part of this, we will be generating a token in a new table. And then we will, of course, send the email off. So to get started, we obviously need to create a new route. We need to create a new method in our controller and then start to validate and then handle things. So let's just duplicate this route down. And this is just going to be a post route through to the same URI. And for this route, let's just call this send token. And let's go and implement this method just over here. So public function send token. Now into this, we're going to accept in a request because we need to extract the email obviously and what I'm going to do is just say something like this validate login and I'm going to pass through the request and just uh, extract this out to a separate method of course you can uh, do everything inside of the send token but I find this just helps to uh, clean things up a little bit so to do this then we want to obviously accept that request into there and then we just want to validate as normal so we know that to validate within a controller, we can just call this validate passing through the request. So Laravel can read the request information. And in here, all we're validating is the email because that's all we're uh, accepting. So this is going to be required. It's going to be an email address. We can set a max 255 if we want. And we want to make sure that this exists in the users table under the email column. So we know that we've already registered a user. So this should work. Uh, well because we already have one in there we can test with and that is pretty much it for the validation so we can obviously test this out just by entering an email address hitting send magic link and you can see that nothing happens however if I go ahead and enter one that doesn't exist we should see that we come back with a selected email is invalid uh, and of course there is some front-end validation here but things like this wouldn't be accepted now all right so now that we've done that how do we start to kick off the process of requesting a link well, what we're going to do is extract this out to a separate class. We're not going to just write tons of code inside of this send token method. And what I've decided to do for this is inside of my app folder, create an entirely new auth folder just to store everything we need. And we're going to be storing a trait in here as well, because we're going to be attaching a trait to the user model which will then allow you, if you have other types of authenticatable users or whatever, you can add that trait in there as well and it will just work. So let's create a new file in here and I'm going to call this magic authentication.php. Let's go ahead and set this up with our namespace. This is now under app and auth. And of course the class is magic authentication. Okay, so what we want to do is be able to inject this into here so we can then use a helpful method on there so the method is simply going to be request link so let's create this method out so request link and what we're going to do as part of this into the constructor that's so we're going to accept in a request which will allow us to then extract things from that request so we don't have to pass it into here you can do that it really depends on how open you want this to be so into the constructor then we're going to accept in a request like so and then we're just going to say this request equals request and obviously set our protected request property up there so from the login controller let's just pull in that namespace for laravel's request object and what we can now do is in here just to test this out we can do a die dump on this request and over in our controller, we can now pull this in. So let's just tidy this up a little bit. And I'm going to go ahead and use app auth magic authentication. And what I can now do is inject this into this method. So let's do that. And we're going to call that auth. And then down here, we're going to call auth request link like so. Okay, so let's just test this out. So I'm going to go ahead and enter a valid email address and hit send magic link and we see that request object. So what Laravel has done is automatically uh, figured out that in the constructor we're accepting a request and it's gone ahead and set that in there. You can pass it into here if you want. For example, you may just want to send an email through. It really depends uh, on what you want to do with this. 
Okay, so the next step then is looking up a user by an identifier. Now what I'm gonna do is keep this open because you might want to identify them by a username or you might want to identify them by something else. So I'm gonna keep this open by creating some kind of identifier just up here. And this is kind of similar to the way that Laravel's authentication uh, happens anyway. You can actually change this around to uh, work with the username if you want. And you can find all of that under the auth controller. So have a, go and have a look at that if you want. So the identifier then will say, well, we want to pluck out the user by their email address. So in here, we're going to say something like this, get user by identifier. And into this, we want to pass in request, get, and then this identifier. So all that will do is it will say this uh, request get email, which is the same as saying request email, like so. So this method then, so get user by identifier, we'll go ahead and accept in the identifier. And all we do here is just look up a user basically, really, really straightforward. So user where this identifier, and then we compare that to the value that's passed in. So this should actually be a value, sorry. And then we just go ahead and say first or fail, because obviously if they don't exist, then uh, you know we don't want to do anything. They shouldn't have. They should never have got to that point because we have that validation in place. But it's always a good idea anyway. So let's just pull in app user. It's just in the default place with a fresh Laravel installation, and we should now have a user by that email. So let's go over and check this out. Go back, hit send magic link. Oh, and of course this will need to be this request. So let's give that a refresh and there we go. So this is my user account with that particular email address. Great, so now that we have the user, we're now getting on to the trait side of things. So what we want to do rather again than doing everything in here, I'm gonna create a trait on the user model, which will allow me to uh, store a token, send the magic link off and all that stuff. So if we think about this, we need a relationship for the user because we need to insert a token. So really the next step is to start to think about the database schema and how we're gonna to store tokens for a particular user. So let's generate a migration then. So I'm gonna say PHP artisan make migration. And this is going to be something like create users login tokens table. And in here we can pass in the create flag to make this a little bit easier for us. So users login tokens. And we will also generate a model as well. We could have generated the model along with the migration, but uh, we'll go ahead and do this separately. So make model, and we're gonna call this user login token, like so. And let's start to fill out our migration. So create users login tokens. Now in here, we obviously need a ID, so integer. This is going to be a user ID. We can set up a foreign key constraint, uh, but We'll go ahead and leave it for now because we're going to be manually deleting anything. But uh, feel free to do that if you want. And we're also going to have a token. So we have a string, which is a token. Now, by default, Laravel will create a 255 length token. And we're going to be generating a really huge token as well. Uh, so this just uh, helps. But of course, you can reduce the length if you want. It's entirely up to you. So let's just migrate. So we have that in there. And we are on our way to go. So the user login token model. Let's first of all, really importantly, define out the table name because this probably won't pick it out by default. So we're gonna say users login tokens and we'll just make sure that everything is looking good here. So user login tokens, brilliant. And now we want to just define out our fillable fields and of course, all of our other stuff as well. So the fillable in this case is literally just going to be the token. That's pretty much all we need to fill in this case. You may store other things in here later, so go ahead and add them to fillable. So uh, with this then, we know it belongs to a user, so we can very quickly and easily set up that relation in here so we can access that user from the token. This is going to be really important because we're going to be accepting a token into a URI. This in turn will then use root model binding to actually pull that token out. And then we need to be able to access the user to pick out things like the email address, and of course, to sign them in as well. So belongs to user. 
So now what we're not going to be doing is coming over to the user model and start to create our relationships in here. We're going to leave that up to the trait. And that means that if, like I said, you did want to use this with another model, you just go ahead and you use the trait and it will just work. So let's focus on the trait because then we can set up the relationship between any magically authenticatable user and the user token model. So this will just make it a little bit more flexible. So inside of auth then let's create a new folder called traits and inside of here we're going to create a new file called magically authenticatable.php of course you can shorten this if you want to quite a long name so in here the namespace then is app auth traits and the class is magically authenticatable so now what we can do then is set up that token relationship because we're going to be using this on the user model so in here then we know that a token uh, a user is only ever going to have one token they don't they're never going to have many tokens that or they at least they shouldn't so we're going to be handling that later but we're going to uh, set the relationship up as a has one relationship so user login token and that is pretty much it so what we can now do is use this over on our user model we're going to be adding some more methods to this later uh, but this just makes it, like I said before, a little bit more flexible. So use app auth traits and that. And then all we need to do is go ahead and use that in there. So we now have that relationship on there, but inside of a trait. And of course, sorry, that should be a trait. Okay. So now going back to our magic login controller, when we hit request link over in magic authentication, we know that we've got the user. So what we can now do is from this point, we can start to actually generate a token. We can then uh, go ahead and grab any more information we need from them. We can send the email and all of that stuff. So really the first thing I want to do is delete any existing tokens before we start to generate any new tokens. So to do this, because we have that user model and we have that token relationship, we're just gonna say delete. So we're just gonna delete the token if they've already requested one. We don't want to keep filling up this table with more and more tokens. So that is super important. And now what we want to kind of do is something like user store token and then something like send magic link and then go ahead and pass through some additional options. Now we'll leave this just for now. We'll look at actually storing the token first and then we'll go on to actually sending this off in the next part. So to store a token then, all we need to do now, because this kind of relates to any particular model that's magically authenticatable, we do this on the trait so it can be reused wherever we want. Because storing the token is a little bit more complex than just inserting a record, we have some very specific things we want to do and we know that we can come over to our trait to find that stuff if we need it. So uh, up the top then, let's just create this store token method, so store token and inside of here then all we're going to do is say this token create and then in here we are going to specify the token now this is just going to be str random if you want to pull in a, another library to handle the random token generation for you that's absolutely fine but str random uses php7 uh, random bytes to actually generate this so uh, it's pretty good uh, there's no, nothing necessarily wrong with using this and then we're going to return this to go ahead and uh, allow us to chain this on and actually if i think about this this part here kind of makes sense to really go in there i think this is absolutely fine we can kind of assume that by storing a token we want to kind of flush out the existing token so i'm going to go ahead and place that in there but of course it's uh, entirely up to you okay so now that we've got to this point we should be able to go ahead and enter our email address and that should store a token for us so we have our table we should see a long token in there so let's go ahead and do this so enter my email address hit send magic link uh, and of course uh inside of our trait we just need to update this so magically authenticatable to pull in that user login token model so app user login token brilliant so let's go over enter my email address and there we go so we should now see that token in there created and ready to go and of course because we have the relationship set up it has already given my id in and pre-populated that 
So now that we have the token, we're ready to email this off. It's not that complicated, but we're going to leave that till the next part because we've covered uh, quite a bit in this part.